Welcome to Communication Across Components with the Compound Component Pattern. In this video, I will introduce the Compound Component Pattern. The objectives of this video are to define the use of React children and React's clone element function. Lastly, I will introduce Compound Components. React offers multiple tools for manipulating elements. And the first we will discuss is React Children. The React documentation states that React Children provides utilities for dealing with the props children opaque data structure. One of the more common utilities utilized in React Children is the map function. This will evoke a function for every child of the component contained within this.props.children. This function will return an array. There is also a for each function that will do the same thing. However, this function will not return an array. Here's an abstracted example of how these calls might look in code. And this will clarify the significance of the map function. So you see, I have a constant called array of children. And this maps through our props children and for every child, and invokes a function on that child. In the parent component, we're able to traverse the array of children passed in and perform some function like modifying the component or injecting props. And now the children are held in the variable array of children that can now be rendered. The for each clause can traverse it's a read-only scenario, so we can use information in a component did mount and read our children and set some form of state to modify the parent component that is calling it. Now let's discuss the other utilities available to us through React's children package. The next is the only function, which will verify that the component only has one child or it will fail. And last, we will discuss two array, which will return a flat array of children. The React documentation states this is useful when you want to manipulate a collection of children in your render methods. Another way to manipulate elements is the clone element function. This function accepts an element, props, and any children as arguments. The result will be a shallow copy of the elements passed in with new props injected into it. The React documentation states the React clone element function is almost equivalent to a copy of the element with its original props and the new props passed in spread into the component. And any children passed in would be nested within our elements, hence the name child, since it will be a child of our cloned element. To see clone element in action, we can simply implement it within some JSX. So right under our view container in our signup screen, I can clone my fancy input component by passing it in as the first argument. Then I can inject the props I want as a second argument in a nested function. So I can set both the item and value key to the clone user. I will omit the children as an argument for now, and that'll wrap up our coding. So if we head over to the simulator, we can see on our signup page, there is a text input with the label and value of cloned user which we just set up. Now that we understand the tools we can utilize to transform our component, let's discuss what actually is the compound component pattern. In short, the pattern is a way to structure your components together to share an implicit state, allowing these components to communicate. So instead of building a bunch of highly configurable components through props, we can utilize some of the React API to transform our components to allow them to share past in state and achieve a solution. So at this point, we have built a foundation of the tools we will utilize to build our compound components.